Are there people in your work life whose personality is a little hard for you to get along with, to get things done with? By the end of this video, you'll have a fast way to understand what drives people and what doesn't, how to work with them and how to create a thriving team, even how traits of your personality can inspire theirs. Each week I publish a new video, so for the best coaching tips and tricks, subscribe to my channel, hit the bell to be notified when I post a video every Thursday. I'm Emily Bigelow. I've led a large direct sales team that I started in 2010, and this is not managerial type skills. This is leadership skills. It's a volunteer army, and you don't get to fire people. And in fact, Jim Rohn said this was like herding cats. I work with a diversified team, and I know firsthand that when it comes to meetings, events, trainings, productivity, Different people work together in different ways. There's different weaknesses, there's different skill sets, and that when you know some of the differences, there are ways to interact and ways that people want to be interacted with. And I don't know about you, but I am a visual person. I have a really great tool that is easy to see different the different personalities in an overview, and I actually keep this at my desk, so I promise that you're gonna want this. In fact, you may want to grab it and even rewatch. So first, just generally, there are four different personality types that I'm gonna talk about today, and they're simplified into shapes. Squiggle, circle, triangle, and a square. And I know there's a lot of different ways to kind of categorize personalities and different tests and things that we can take, but this is really probably one of the easiest ways that I have found in a business working environment to be able to easily categorize and see what someone is and then understand because of some of their traits and their characteristics, how to work with them best and how to maybe help them work with the team best. So if we're gonna look at this in a quadrant, okay? So there's four different personalities and the top of the quadrant and the bottom of the quadrant is where I start. So if they're at the top of the quadrant, I can tell by their dress, I can tell by their timing, whether or not they forgot there was a meeting, whether they are a visionary or a healer, a circle squiggle. So let me start first with the squiggle. So the squiggles are going to be your, these are your visionaries. These are your people who are extremely creative. They're also very intuitive. So they have a lot of really great ideas, but part of the help that you can offer them is finishing those ideas because there's a lot of ideas constantly swimming and they lack focus sometimes. And they also have a tendency to procrastinate. So if you have people in your organization or on your team that have a lot of ideas, but then making them come to fruition, even some of these ideas, they may need a little help or support in that. So things with them that you'll want to do is to make sure that things are kept simple. These squiggles, the visionaries, they need interaction. They enjoy recognition. They like simple texting, simple, simple messages, simple emails. They don't like complicated things. They don't like things controlled for them. Meetings, details, all of that. Very creative minds usually. So make sure that you keep things very simple and very straightforward with them. Help keep them organized. Maybe it's said that they don't move on from a project until, until something is completed, until you're helped. 24% of the population falls into this category of a visionary. The next that we'll talk about at the top of the quadrant is the circle. So the circle, also known as a healer, there's 46% in, in the population, 46% of people are a circle. So these are list makers. So these are your people who are gonna be planning and list making. They tend to arrive to a meeting 10 to 20 minutes late. They're probably the ones that you're waiting the meeting for and they're just gonna absolutely drive you crazy. But they have great sensitivity and they need to be needed. So part of your job as a leader is to communicate the needs that you have for them that you need them to fill. No is not in their vocabulary, so as you're working with them, be aware of that. They may take on too much because they're afraid to say no. They're very much kind of that need to be needed, people pleasing. They need things to be stable and unchanging. So you're gonna notice when there's a policy change implemented, when there's some changes that go on within your corporation, within your organization, these are the people that are gonna have a harder time with the change. So maybe pointing things out what stayed the same with a small variation of some of the changes may, may be super helpful to them. They like to help, they like to arrange, they like to know that someone is there to help them. So in mentoring and working with them, I'm here to help you. I'm just a phone call away. I'm in your pocket if you need me. Really helpful to your circles. 
they do not like to be front and center. So if you have a meeting or a presentation or you have something, they don't want to be that person up there speaking. They don't want to be the front and center. Harsh words are really hard for them. So if your leadership style is a little bit more of that direct communicator, these guys just you got to soften it just a little bit with these guys. When you are mentoring with them, when you're working with them directly, indirectly, like one-on-one, -on -one, whatever, really important is to set a timer because this circle is like they have continuous stories and continuing thoughts. And so it's really good to set a timer. We have X amount of time. This is what we're accomplishing in this period of time. Is this making sense to you? Are you realizing some of the people who might be like the squiggle visionary or the circle healer in your working environment that you work with? Give me a big yes in the comments below. It might be you. You might be the 24% visionary. You might be the 46% healer. Okay, so now before I go in and I tell you about the other two, how to mentor them, how to work with them, their strengths, something I do need to mention is that you're going to have a dominant and then you're going to have a subdominant. So you'll see some of the characteristics in both play out. I have an actual numeric like way to figure out what your shape is. You're not going to really be able to give other people this quiz unless you're in an authority role or a leadership role of some kind to figure out what shape they are, but you can watch some of the general characteristics. So moving down to the bottom quadrant, you have a triangle and you have a square. And these are going to be more of your factual analytical thinkers versus kind of the feeling up along the top. Your triangle is going to be more of your driver, your entrepreneur. 7% of the population falls within this category. So it is a smaller group of people. These people are the ones that are going to be, when it comes to timing, they're going to run five minutes to on time. That's on time to them is five minutes before to, to write on the minute of. And if they are a leader, they're running the meeting on time. They are looking for results. They are result driven. They naturally have a tendency to take charge. These people need guardrails. So if you had give them a project, just kind of let them know what the guardrails are and you need to just let them run. A problem that they have is that they lack sensitivity. So when it comes to communicating with maybe, say, for example, a circle who's going to be, you got to be a little bit softer in your words, um, just be sensitive that as a triangle, you might need to soften it a little bit in working with, with some of those others. A, a triangle needs to feel like they're doing a really good job, like they're mastering things. You can give them options. If you're in a leadership role, give them options one, two, or three. Let them choose. Let them work within the guardrails. Do not tell them, I need you to, or you have to. It's really going to kind of rub the triangle in the wrong way. When you're mentoring them, give them goals. These will be your goal setting type people. They appreciate minimal words. They're not really into your big, long stories, elaborate descriptions, like things like that. Just They're just kind of minimal, a little bit more blunt and to the point. They do like compliments and they like training. So if you have training, just expose them to the training, set the guardrails and let them run. The next shape is the 23% of the population. So this is your oracle, your analytical thinker. These people are facts, numbers, data. They are logic based. They are problem solvers. They're not very spontaneous. So if you spring a project on them at the last minute, they're not really gonna love that. Um, but they have a natural integrity. Like these people, well, truth is bottom line. They're not into small talk. They don't appreciate lies. It's not black or white. It's just kind of the facts. One thing with them is that you need to make sure that you give them time to answer. They need accuracy. So they're not okay with your wishy-washy answers. They want the accuracy. Part of the problem with wanting all of the facts and all of the accuracy and the analytical is that they just need to start. So it's okay to tell them in a mentoring and a leadership role, I just need you to get started. These are the kind of people that are going to read through your entire policy handbook. They're going to know all of the details. Help them to know why they're doing what they're doing. That's really going to help them. They're not going to want to play things by ear. So if that's your leadership style, you've got to just refrain from these analyticals and these critical thinkers. You've got to refrain from just, we're just going to play it by ear. And well, I don't really know. Don't worry. I've got it. They know that you don't have it. So it's they're not going to be okay with that answer. When it comes to mentoring or working with them, tell them the why. Give them the step-by-step. Do this, do that, give them the numbers, give them the statistics. 
when it comes to a meeting, these are your people that are going to show up probably 10 minutes beforehand. They are completely prepared. They've got all of the, the portfolio. They've got the highlighter colors. They have all of that. They're ready to roll. So now just to put this into a really kind of a quick overview in one word. Your squiggles are your idea people. Your circles are the people that need to be needed. Your triangle, they're your driver. They're either all the way in, like running the show, or they're out. And then your squares, those are your number people. In a scenario, a real life scenario of an elevator. I love this because I know that you're gonna get this. In an elevator scenario, your squiggles are probably the ones that forgot that their floor, would, they were just either engrossed or whatever, they missed their floor. Your circles are the ones that are talking to everybody, right? Kind of just, How, da, 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 da. how's things go? How's this, how's that? Your triangles are friendly and they're observing and your squares are the ones that are adding up. How many people are on the elevator? How much weight is that? What's the maximum capacity? And they're off, they're gonna take the stairs. In a real life scenario, you can kind of see how that plays out. So how do you tell what shape people are. You tell by their timing, you can tell by their clothes, you can tell by their storytelling. So if they're running up along the top, the squiggle and the circle, their timing, they're gonna be a little bit late, maybe forgot the meeting. If they're along the bottom, then they're gonna be either five to 10 minutes early or directly on time. So top or bottom. Then when it comes to their attire, your top are gonna to run, generally speaking, in a little bit more comfortable clothing. Okay, these people love PJs along the bottom, a little more dressy, but they do love slippers. One easy tell is their story. When they're talking story or when they're around the water cooler or whatever, are they talking about along the top, if they're a squiggle or a circle, they're gonna be talking about feelings, stories with feelings. If they're a triangle or if they're a square, they're gonna be talking more about facts, stories with facts. So you can tell by their timing, by their clothes, by the type of stories that they're telling, whether they're the top or whether they're more along the bottom. And it seems kind of silly, but you can easily, like, and there's actually a psychological aspect to this, but you can ask them, I'm gonna give you four seconds and four shapes, and I want you to choose one. And you give them squiggle, circle, square, triangle, and by that time, there's actually kind of a reason why they would choose that particular shape. They'll give you a shape, but in in with their shape and then actually you just watching and observing, knowing uh, the way that they're working and the way that they're interacting, maybe which more is more their dominant shape and how to work with them. And that's effective, but really there's a quiz below. It's an actual numeric scenario base, like how do you react here? How do you react here? How do you react here? Way of giving you your exact personality type, your dominant and your subdominant. And also there's that visual key with the different personality types. I keep this at my desk and I actually have for a lot of years as I've really worked through and processed the different personalities and how to work with them. And it's really, this has really become super solid for me. I mentioned that to you that will really help you lock on on figuring these people out. That's down in the description below. So just click on that little arrow and you're gonna find this different personality quiz and personality traits. If you have any questions about working with the different personalities, if you have any ahas, drop those in the comments below. Be sure to catch the other videos that I'll be doing in this series in the personal realm, dating, deeper dive into the characters of the personalities. So be sure that you subscribe. Hit the like button if you liked it and if you saw value, please share it.